It's the Too Too Late Show, featuring your host, the world-renowned Lord Henry, and not to mention the worst band on earth, the Whittle Monsters. That has been sad. Like, really, really sad. <laughs> Pipe down, people. There's nothing you guys can do. Nothing I can do. And just knowing just makes it sad. And so I'm sitting at home, and I'm brooding. But one of my friends, he's like, hey, you can't be sitting around your house just scribbling and brooding and thinking about your mommy dying. And if you're not thinking about your mommy dying, you think about your dad dying, and all you're really doing is just sitting in a black hole. Oh, it's tiring. You didn't go to the pub. You didn't find a beautiful woman, fall in love, make a few babies, and run into the sunset. So we go to the pub, we go down the street, we go to Scooters. It's 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 the big hit club in the Joliet area. I mean, some people are like, oh, it's Shorewood, but I don't count a different town unless there's a gap of space, like farm and shit between the two places that equals another town. So basically, it's Joliet, but they say they're Shorewood just because Joliet's known for prison. Because Joliet, here's the thing with this area, Joliet loves their prison, and they just want you to know they got a prison. Their, their, their movie appearances deal with prison. When people come to film things, it's in a prison. Joliet loves their fucking prison. And so what happened was the small sector calls itself Juliet and everyone around it was like, okay, you guys hype that that prison and we'll just pretend uh, we're other towns. Like you cross the street and they're like, oh, you're not really, you're not Juliet, you're in Rockdale. And you have to be like, no, I just went under a bridge. That doesn't count as new town. Yeah, I'm just going to draw my notebook so I go to a table and I'm just drawn away. I'm minding my own business. I get myself a Long Island. I'm minding my own business. It's all good time. The music's playing. I'm all happy and there's cute girls in the background. I'm in my little bubble. And so I get back to drawing. And now it, it's getting late. So they call Last Call. And what happens to the Last Call is one of those things where they just start screaming the fuck out you like they're like let's go get the fuck out motherfucker you need to get out and you know it's like you know yeah for you we can't all leave at once because the parking lot will be just a big clusterfuck and we're all like door at the same time we'll all be smashed in the door oh, so this, once they say last call you would think that's done but somewhere in this area they just keep yelling at you they're like it's last call you know, and you're just like what the fuck why calm the fuck down like, we got it lights are on you said last call i got i just bought a drink so you would think that there's an x amount of time frame to finish said drink like or else they would call it last shots and you would just take a, a quick shot, you know, so it's like, well, come on, I got like at least 15, 20 minutes, I mean, shit, they just called it, and now you're telling us to get the fuck out, that's a little fast, I need time to drink the drink that you just said it was the last, why are you yelling at me, so anyways, I'm drawing, they call last call, and I'm looking around for my crew, I'm the driver, so obviously, you know, and everybody's leaving, and it's fanning out, and so obviously, I know they're gonna be looking for me, because I got the fucking key, so, and suddenly, I hear just a loud punch, and, and of course, you know, I'm not really phased by it, because I just assumed it was my asshole friends who were just punching my table, because that's what we do, we punch each other, I mean, it's just kind of, we roll. So, you know, I wasn't even angry, plus I had a lot of my mind, we think about my mom dying and all this crazy shit. So I just look up and I'm expecting to see my best friend, and sure enough, it's one of the security guards. And he's all puffy and like staring at me all crazy and shit, trying to do his best macho man impersonation. Randy Savage impersonation. I almost wanted to give him a gold clap. Like, good job. She just hit my table. He's like, yeah, I just hit your table. I don't even really know who this man is. And I'm trying to figure out what the security guard's doing, you know, raising me for. Yeah, creeper, you need to get out. And he's kind of raised my cup, like, okay, you know, I don't even say anything. I just sort of smile, like, okay. Kind of finish up my drawing. And then he's like, hey, Creeper, I said, get the fuck out. And I realize he's consistent on this Creeper thing. So I was like, Creeper? He's like, yeah, I know you, motherfucker. And I'm like, looking at him, because I sure as fuck don't know him. And I'm probably, and the thing is, when, I, when things are going on in my mind, uh, my face tells exactly what I'm thinking. Like, who the fuck is this guy? Who? Is he? And he's like, yeah, I know you're Barnes and Noble. Oh, he obviously got the hint from our face. Like, we had no clue who the fuck he was or what the fuck his problem was. So then he says Barnes and Noble. And then we hit another pause because now we're like, Barnes and Nobles. Where do I remember this name? And so in my mind, I'm trying to think, Barnes and Noble, where the fuck do I, when, 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 where, what? And then I, then it clicks in my head. It's some bookstore that I went to like last millennia. Okay, now, oh, geez. See, here's another thing that irritates me. He's called me Creeper and he references this point in which I should know him, that I don't know him. And so I go back to figure this out. In fact, I'm even like, Barnes & Noble, that's a bookstore. Do bookstores even exist anymore? Don't we just, isn't everything electronic? Like, a bookstore? When the fuck did this man know me? And even then, I'm like, no way, could it be that long ago? And the guy's like, yeah, I know you that long ago. It's like he queued it up with what my mind was saying. And I'm like, did you say that? So he's mad as, I was like, and at this point, like, I didn't even know how to react to it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go now. Because it's like, what next? I was just waiting for another security guard to come out from Blockbuster. Okay, and now I'm gonna have to break this down for a lot of my more modern uh, people. Okay, so a long time ago, this is before the, the this millennia, the shit was just weird, okay? So you didn't have cameras that just took photos, you had like a, a temporary camera that would take some photos that you couldn't look at, and you'd have to take it to a place to get it made so you could look at the photos, 1999, and that's when this guy's talking about, and I'm like, who the fuck are you, 
what have you been doing for 10 years that you remember and hate me from a store I shopped at like like two decades ago? And then at this point, I'm like, great, was the, the camera lady from the camera house going to come out and be like, here's a guy who kept sending them weird dick photos and trying to get me in trouble and blah, 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 and telling me way too much shit that I didn't know about the photography industry. And then I was expecting like the guy from Bob Bardash. No, you guys would understand what that is, so I'll just call it Blockbuster. So this guy from Blockbuster will come out and be like, oh, you used to rent movies with your ugly, slutty-ass girlfriend back in 2002 and you used to make fun of my Gwyneth Paltrow shred and call me a flaming homo because I love Gwyneth Paltrow. You saying that straight guys can't like Gwyneth Paltrow because they can. And I do. I have a wife. I mean, I'm saying you have a sexy booty, but I have a wife. And, uh, did I tell you you look cute, young man? Oh, jeez. Jeez, just please, sir. Just, I don't even know who you are. Listen, you didn't rewind your movies back in 1990.